Hey everyone, this is Steve with Entering Into Space. And so, hear me out, bear with me. Okay, you're processing SHO, like we've all done. The Hubble palette, it's popular, right? You all know where to put your hydrogen, your sulfur, your oxygen. And when you combine them, what do you get? Green, 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 green. So then what do you do? You spend a ton of time either using color mask or some sort of uh, normalization script and pics insight that requires a PhD, tons of stretching and curves and, and trying to do what? Get rid of the green. Try to get our green to be yellow. Let's try to get our oxygen to be more blue instead of teal. Let's deal with the sulfur and all the magenta that comes along with it. Let's write a script to get rid of the magenta. You know, let's do all of this work. My God, people work to get rid of the green. I know I'm rambling, but seriously, what I've come up with is not really a process that I, I started the fundamentals on. I did see this and I will give credit where credit's due. But what I've done is I've taken something that was adapted for another type of process and brought it into the Hubble pallet world because I'm sick of the green. Who's sick of the green? Can you feel me? Let's get over here to Pix and Sight. And let me show you what I do to apply a process that I've coined colorized SHO. All right, let's get into it. Okay, you with me? So I posted a little teaser image of some Sol Nebula data. I've done several images, including Orion in SHO, and they've all worked out flawlessly. Uh, so I did a little teaser image of some Sol Nebula data here. So that's what we're gonna use for tonight's video. Uh, and in true fashion, nothing out of the ordinary here, nothing controversial. You know, we've got some nice uh, sulfur data. You know, sulfur is, is very rich in, uh, in, in kind of punchy structure, you can see. I always love the sulfur data of a lot of these images. Um, let's do something. Let's, uh, let's rename this a shorter name, shall we? So there's our S2. You know, our weaker signal of O3. It's always kind of matted and muted and just kind of spongy looking, but that's our O3. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, oh, do, 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 three. And of course, our HA. And everybody knows that when you put HA into the green channel, you get Hulk smash, set of a four. So let's shorten up the name, HA. And what I want to do is I want to kind of crop in on this area here, speeds the process up. And uh, we're just going to really focus on this really cool area right in here. So the first thing we're going to do is come in here to process, come down to geometry. We're going to crop this image. <clears throat> so I'm just going to draw a box like that. I'm going to rotate it. Something in that neighborhood right there. I like that. Just focus in on that area. I'm not going to hit the execute button. I'm going to drag the instance off. So I have all of the crop pr parameters in that little instance down there. So let's close the tool. Yes. And we're going to drag and drop. Yes, it's going to affect it. I get it. So here's our image. That's what we're going to be working on. <clears throat> let's push it up here. S2. Do the same thing. Yes. And O3. Uno mas. One more time. Cool. All right. So what I want to do is next step, I want to clean up the background. It's a little fuzzy. And because I have uh, the majority of the field of view now is nebulosity, I'm not going to try to worry about putting samples in here with dynamic background extraction. I'm going to use automatic. So process, background modelization, automatic. Uh, I'm going to drop down here this interpolation and output. I'm going to change that value to one. I'm going to leave the box size and box separation alone. Uh, the correction is going to be division and I'm going to discard the background because I don't want it. I'm going to drag and drop, restretch the image, move in, 
Okay, so let's close that. Do the same for S2. I know this is boring. We're going to get to the good stuff, I promise. Uh, okay, S2 is done. Looks really good. And where's my O3? There you are, buddy. There you go. Got your drop on the O3. Alright, cool. So let's close the tool. We don't need it anymore. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of a combined luminance. I want everybody to have a contribution in the luminance. And, and I'm going to do what I did the very first time I got to this point. I combined them. So I'm going to come over here to channel combination. I'm going to put my HA in the green. O3 in the blue. S2 in the red. I'm going to hit this uh, apply global. I'm going to get this image here. I'm going to apply a stretch. Ugh. Right? Ugh. I saw this for the first time and I was like, ah, what do I do now? Yeah. Uh, but the only reason I'm doing that <coughs> is I'm going to come up here to this little uh, rainbow uh, extract C-I-E-L component, luminance. I'm going to click it, do an auto stretch, and this is going to be my luminance, which is pretty much a combination of all three color palettes or signals or whatever you want to call it. So that's going to be my luminance. I'm going to put this over here as a reference, just as a... All right, see, we, we could unlink the channels, restretch it, and you kind of start getting some, kind of what you want to look like. Still got a ton of green. You got some really muted yellows in here. A lot of work. We don't want to do that. So let's minimize that. Let's push this over here in the corner. Let's put baby in the corner. Okay, so this is my luminance image. Like I said, this is the image I'm going to use for all my detail. Uh, this is me and Russell. We're going to work on this image here in a minute, but not yet. What we want to do is start to work on our color data. And this is something that um, I kind of gleaned from my short little stint on the Astro Imaging channel talking to Eric Cole is I do not fight with narrow band colored stars because what happens is you get a ton of yellow. If you've ever processed this and you've left your stars in or tried to keep them somehow or another with a color, you'll find that a lot of these smaller stars will just turn yellow because you're trying to get the yellow, the green to turn yellow, right? So I am going to remove the stars. I am not going to generate a star image because I don't want them. I'm only going to use my luminous stars. So this is really boring, but I'll fast forward to it. Pulling out the stars. Oh, okay. All right. So HA stars are out. Why is that? Uh, oh, and Russell Croman, I'm sure you're just watching this video with bated breath. Uh, but if you could, when you come out with an, a modified version of Star Exterminator, how about making it to where you can just dump a bunch of images here and say, I want to remove the stars instead of having to do this one at a time. Okay, so uh, sulfur stone. And oxygen. Boring. Oxygen. Okay, oxygen is clean of stars. Cool. Uh, so let's minimize that. Um, it is a little noisy, so I think because I don't like really stretching noise, I'm going to run a little noise exterminator on this thing, or you can, uh, if you don't have these, you can obviously run your favorite linear uh, noise reduction. Set to about 50%. Don't want to push it too hard. Okay, nice smooth uh, oxygen data. Do the same with our sulfur. Sulfur is badass. Okay, sulfur done. And lastly, the HA. Okay. Uh, and I did say, I did preface earlier that I was going to give credit where credit is due. And so Anton over at Galactic Hunter was, I really emphasized the T there, didn't I? He was doing a modified HA RGB image where he wasn't trying to subtract 
the red from the HA and then combine the HA back with the red and some pixel math equation and, and then get purple and some weird crazy colors and then try to fight that back in and then put a luminance on top of that and then now it's all muted and white and then forcing the red. He didn't do any of that stuff. You know what he did? He took his HA and he made it red. And then he put his RGB stars together, pulled them out, put them on top of that image, HA RGB. And I thought, you know, that was pretty cool. So I decided, why can't we do that with SHO? So dig it. Check this out. Uh, this is HA. This is in uh, a grayscale. And what do we want our HA to be? We want it to be yellow gold, right? Um, this is our S2 data. What do we want S2 to be? We want S2 to be more reddish yellow, which really makes sense because actually S2 is further up, is redder on the light spectrum than HA. Uh, and then we want our O3 to be kind of a blue, teal, somewhere in there, maybe heavier to the blue. We love that blue. We're like, oh, blue, it's amazing. Uh, so those are the three colors that we want to see in our image. So why not just make them that color? I mean, the controversy is, is yeah, I'm colorizing this gray data, but guess what? I'm doing all this manipulation anyway when I combine it to try to get rid of the green. So let's just make the colors or each one of these data sets, the color that we want them up front. All right. So if you're still with me and you haven't turned this off because you think I'm crazy, follow along. All right. So we need to take this out of a linear state. We need to stretch this image. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F12 to kill the auto stretch. I'm going to do histogram transformation. I'm going to choose my HA data. Bing. Do a real-time preview. I'm going to turn on the track view for the histogram peak. Now I'm going to moderately stretch this data. I'm going to really be conservative, almost to the point of clipping. Uh, I don't want to overstretch the data because I can always continue to stretch it. I can't unstretch it, right? So you can see I've got some nice HA data coming up here. That's about all I want to use histogram transformation for. I'm going to finish this off with curves. I'm going to open up the curves channel or curves transformation. All right. I'm going to find this is my black point right here. I can roll my mouse, roll my mouse wheel back to kind of zoom in to the linear line here. So I'm really, really dark. Let me try to pick that up just a little bit. Pull it back out to full view. Then I'm going to create a subtle. You see kind of those highlights popping in there. Just a little kind of moderate S curve right there. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of a heavier S curve. Pull that down. Bring this back up kind of strong. All right. And then I can just lift the whole thing right about here. Let me come in here and pull it up. You can see I'm just kind of popping these areas in here. All right. So this is my stretched HA. And I have control over this too. I don't have to stretch it as hard. You know, that was the other alternative that we had in days of old is we could mega stretch our image and then try to blow out the, the oxygen to really get it to kind of pierce through this HA. Uh, you know, and just keep punching this oxygen up to try to get some blue in our image, right? We're not doing that anymore. Uh, so this is our HA data stretched. Let's minimize that. Do the same thing for S2. Hit F12 to kill the stretch. Instagram transformation. Let's choose our S2. Roll time preview. And then now here we'll track the histogram peak. So we're going to pull that mid-tone slider over. Accept it and reset. Oop, bleh, I forgot it. Pull it over again. All right, it's looking good. Accept it and reset. Now we're off the left hand side. Let's pull this over one more time. What about there? And reset the tool. Let's close that down. Close the real time preview. Let's open up curves. Under black point, a little higher. Let's 
go ahead and pull that down. Lift it up. And then pop it on the top up here. Right there, you can see some of that starting to stretch. I like it. And let's just lift it. I love this little guy. I don't know what he is, but I should really find out. I should know more about what I'm shooting. 2023 goals. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to call our S2 good. Um, leave that curve transformation open. Let's bring up the O3. This one's going to be a little tougher because there's not a lot of signal there. Hit F12. Let's go close that tool down. Histogram transformation. Let's reset it to the O3. Do real time preview and turn on the histogram peak. And move our midtone slider over to start applying a stretch. I'm going to do this pretty. We're going to watch this one because we definitely don't want to blow this O2. O2. O3 out. Okay. Now let's bring over that black point. Just a little bit. Accept that. Let's close down histogram transformation. Close real time preview. We're going to go into curves transformation here. I'll do real time preview. The RGBK. Let's lift just a little bit. You can see now we're kind of bringing up that O3 signal. All right, so let's grab it right here on the back end. We're going to pull it down. Come right about here and we're going to lift it. So now we've got good contrast between our background and our higher signal to noise ratio areas. Let me do that one more time. Lift it up again. Ooh, I like it. You like it? Do you like it? Hey, my shirt's appropriate too, right? Because like, you're killing me smalls. You're killing me green. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, so curves transformation. Let's close it. Let's close the real time preview. Okay, here comes the fun part. So what did I say? We're going to make our O3 blue. We're going to make our S2 kind of reddish yellow and we're going to make our ha gold right so how do we do that we're going to come in here to process color space conversion convert to rgb and you'll see your histogram transformation turn to an rgb uh profile and one of the things that anton did that i really liked is how he masked this and what he did is he came in here to process uh noise reduction ac dnr and we're gonna drop this lightness mask tab. This is where we're gonna live for a little bit. We're gonna click the preview button and a real time preview. And we're gonna scratch our ear. Uh, okay, so we're gonna bring down the midtones. And we're gonna bring down the highlights. And then we're gonna boost our shadows, which starts to give us some separation. So basically, What's in black will receive color. What's in white will remain black space. Dig it. Okay. So I like that right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the real time preview. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to drag this little tab off. I'm going to make a copy of my image, my nonlinear O3 image. And then I'm going to take this instance and drag it over. Bam. Got a mask. So let's just minimize this tool because we're going to use it two more times. We're going to take our mask tab. We're going to drag it over and put it on right underneath that other tab. Creates a mask. And we're going to have to invert that mask. Very important. Invert your mask. So right click on the image and then here mask, invert mask. So you can see all this red is protecting the background. What isn't protected is where we want to make our color. So let's right click on the image, say mask and show mask, meaning the mask is still there, but we can't see it. We can't see what is masking. So let's come over here to curves. Let's get to work. Blue. Blue. All right. Let's pull down our green. Pull down our red. And 
Let's take our B component and pull it down. Blue's pretty easy. Happens really quick. Let's accept that. Whoa, look at that. Look how blue that is. Let's maybe give it one more little touch of boost of blue. Oop. And then take the C component. That adds vibrance. Right there. Let's take our lightness. I don't like a really heavy blue. Now, now listen, people. I know you're like, what is he doing? But guess what? This is what we want to see in our image. We're just getting there quicker. Uh, okay, so turn off the real-time preview. Mask. Remove mask. Okay, here's our blue. O3 is now blue. Uh, S2. We want this to be reddish yellow. Right? So... Let's close the curves transformation. We're going to come in here to process color space conversion, convert that to an RGB. All right, we got to make a mask. So AC DNR. Let's reset it. Let's do a real time preview and we're going to check preview. Very important. So we're going to pull down our highlights and our midtones. We're going to push up our shadows. We're just going to keep working on this mask till the higher signal to noise areas are dark. Push that shadows up. You can see we're starting to get some pretty good separation in here. There we go. So all this darker area is going to receive the color. These wider areas are going to remain dark space. Okay. Uh, so let's close the real-time preview. Let's drag over a copy. Drag the instance over, we created a mask. Some of this pixelation that you see in here, you can, uh, if you don't like that, if it bugs you, you can open up the convolution tool, do a real time preview and just blur it, smooth it out. Okay. So drag the mask over, right click on it, mask, invert mask, Right click again, mask, show mask. Mask is applied. So we're gonna make this reddish yellow. This is fun. So let's start with red. We're gonna boost the red. We're gonna pull down the green. And we're really gonna pull down the blue. We're gonna take this uh, B component here. We're actually gonna push it up. You can see that starts to give us some, some red reddish yellow tones move our C component add a little vibrance let's accept that Ooh, doggy all right let's do it again let's go to red push it up let's actually add a little green in here we're gonna pull our blue out and we pull that blue out we get that start to see that kind of yellow color up here. So our B component, we're going to push it up right about there. We're going to accept that. At the very end here, I think I'm going to add just a little more red. And add a little lightness to it. Lightness will actually take away some of your saturation if you feel like you've oversaturated. Let's pull that blue out. It's kind of a reddish yellow. What do you think? Do you like that color? That's the thing. Do you like the color? I like the color. That's what I want to see in my SHO image. That's what I want to see my S2 look like. So let's minimize the tool. Or the real-time preview, not the tool. Uh, let's uh, remove the mask. We're going to call our S2 good. HA, we want to be this. We want this to be more punchy yellow. Right? Uh, so one last time, color space conversion. Convert to RGB. <coughs> All right. Uh, oh, we closed our AC DNR. What do we do that for? Process. Uh, noise reduction. AC DNR. Let's reset the tool right here. Do a real time preview and select preview. Push down that midtone. Push down our highlights. I love HA. It's so cool looking. Push down our midtones a little bit more. I like that. Close the, oops, we did it too quick. Close the real-time preview. Let's drag off a copy or a clone. And let's dump our instance on there. 
El Masco. Being very Latin tonight. Uh, let's put the mask on. And then we're going to invert the mask. And we're going to hide the mask. Okay. Curves. Real time preview. This time we're shooting for yellow. So we're going to hit that red. We're going to pull out some green. And we're going to pull out some blue. We're going to take this B component and push it up. Because remember we're trying to achieve yellow. We're going to start getting some of that yellow back in there. We're going to accept that. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. All right. So. Boost up on the red. We're going to pick this green up on the high side. Pull it down on the low side. Gives us a little red. Then we pull that blue out. You can see. We're getting that yellow gold that we want. B component. Let's lift it. Oh, yeah. Right? Get the lightness. Oh, my goodness gracious. So let's just take and pull some blue out. When you pull that blue out, you're really going to see that yellow pop. That's that yellow gold we're all looking for. Right? Let me brighten it up just a little bit. Now let's hit that C component and add some vibrance to that. That's what you want to see, right? But it didn't have to get rid of any green to get there. Close it. Close a real time preview. Mask. Remove the mask. So, dig it. There's our hydrogen. There's our sulfur. And there's our oxygen. Let's minimize them. Now, watch this. If you open up channel combination and you go to drag that in there, boink, wait, wait, boink. No, nope, it doesn't work because they're RGB. And this tool and LRGB combination needs grayscale images to combine. So we got to force these, these guys together. What we're going to use is pixel math. Don't worry. It's not a long out equation, right? We're just going to uncheck use single rgbk expression so we can put data in each one of these channels open up the editor and now let's do the hubble palette red is s2 green is uh ha and blue is o3 like that let's do this little drop down destination tab here we're going to create a new image uh, we're going to call this RGB. You have to have one of these images open to run the tool and you're going to hit the square button to apply. Oh my God. There you go. There you go, people. Ding, ding, ding. There you go, people. This almost looks like uh, what Eric Coles does in the tone mapping in Photoshop where you're aligning the RGB channels in selected areas. My God, that's a lot of work. No offense, Eric. Uh, but anyway, look at, let's just take a minute. Can we just take a minute? Let me just move around here. Look at the colors. I... Yeah. Still got a little green in here, right? Uh, but it, 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 it's not overpowering and it blends well. Now, if you do this, and I have done some images, and you get what I see is probably a little too much magenta. You can come in here to script, utilities, uh, correct magenta stars. You know, you can push this down to the low 40s and click execute. And see... Do you like that? But I like I like that magenta in there. I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. So I'm gonna go ooh, one more time and one more time. So this is our image. Um, and uh, okay, ready? All right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if we were to take, well, I'm not even gonna do it. But this is, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I know you're like, shut up, man. It looks good. Move on. I know the stars. Whatever. You see the colors? You see the colors? Anyway, I'll get over it. All right, so this is our color. I'm not doing anything to it. I'm going to leave it just like this. Um, I'm going to push it down. Image 20. Whoa, you're amazing. All right. So I said this is our luminance. Uh, so let's do a little preview window right about here. Let's come in here to our preview window. Let's open up the blur exterminator. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do a dynamic and autumn. I'm not going to, I'm going to leave this as automatic. I'm not going to enter my value in here because there's pretty much stars in every portion of this image. There really is an image that doesn't have a lot of stars. So because this image has stars in every one of the processing squares that, that blur exterminator uses, I think it's got enough stars to choose the correct PSF. It's my explanation. I listened. Uh, okay, I uh, am going to push down the, the sh sharpen non-stellar, which is the nebula, just a little bit. I'm going to choose correct first. So I wanted to correct, and then I wanted to do a sharpening. Uh, I am going to move the sharpen stars down just just a skosh, and I'm going to leave the star halo alone. And we're going to do a preview. Oh my goodness gracious! So can, wait, wait, wait. Control Shift and Z. Need I say more? So let's apply that loveliness to the whole image. Oh, good. Oh, okay. So that's done. Uh, so minimize. Let's minimize that. And let's do another. Oop, nope. Let's kill this player view. Let's delete it. Let's get one like kind of in this lower, whoop, wait a minute, lower signal and noise area. I want to check out the noise exterminator. Let me push that down just a little bit. We're going to push up the uh, details just a little bit. Drag and drop. Oh, yeah. Silk is smooth. Okay. I'm excited. All right, so that's done. Let's kill that tool. Let's delete the preview. And let's hit F12 and we're going to stretch it. And we're going to use histogram transformation again. Now, uh, one little difference that I'm going to make with this uh, image 21L, 12L dyslexia uh, is I'm going to pull the stars pretty soon. It's just another form of star reduction. You know, and I, I think you may have heard out there in astrophotography lay on that blur exterminator isn't really good for wide field images. I disagree. Why? Because it shrinks your stars and it's the first step to star reduction. Okay. So we're just going to keep pulling that mid-tone slider in um, until we like the size of our stars, which I like them about right there. Kill that tool. I say kill a lot, don't I? And let's go ahead and pull our stars. I do want to generate a star image. Because I want to put them back in. Ooh, man, that is some good guidance. My goodness. Okay, let's minimize our stars. Put right down here. Close the tool. And from this point on, I'm going to use uh, curves. And I got a really dark background, so I want to just kind of grab it and I want to lift the whole image right there. When you pick these, pick this line up in increments, you start to give it better contrast. You see this? All I'm really affecting is the brightness around here. All right. And you just continue to do this in several iterations. Let's lift it one more time. 
can see I'm not lifting it much. All right. And I can always stretch it more. I want to pull it down and I'm going to lift it up and create a pretty good contrasty S curve. See where I'm really kind of popping the brightness in here? Sink. Like that. And then maybe let's just grab it right in the middle and just lift the whole image. What about there? I could pull it down, but I'm not going to. Do I want to? I don't know. No, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to accept that. Um, if I feel like it's a little... Little, no, I think it's going to be okay. I think we can apply it, but I think we're going to have to put a little more stretch on it. So let's minimize that. Let's open up our amazing image. I'm sorry. It's just amazing. LRGB combination is the tool we're going to use to put the luminous back in. We're going to reset the tool. Because Lord knows what I was doing with it. We're going to drag our luminance here. We're going to turn off our R, G, and B. I'm not going to touch these sliders at all, and I'm not going to do any chrominance noise reduction because she's already pretty smooth. Okay, so we got great detail, but we've got an image that needs to be stretched. That's pretty normal. Let's kill that tool. God, there I go killing again. Uh, we're going to just take that luminous and just put it right back on here. Thoink. And right click on it and say show mask. So the mask is still applied because the tab is orange. And we're going to come in here to curves. And we're just going to lift it right in the middle. And pull it down. All right. Maybe lift it on the low end. Just trying to get some, some brightness back into the image. We can really lift. Look at that. I mean, look at these colors. I'm going to say that a lot, so you're just going to have to get used to it. All right. I'm not going to push it any harder. Yeah. Let's just, let's just take a trip. Want to take a trip around? Look at this guy. Look. Have you ever got colors like that before? Can I get a woot woot? Woot woot? No, seriously, in the comments, go down there, hit that like button, and then leave me a woot woot. I want to see how many woot woots I can get. That's W-O-O-T, W-O-O-T, fist bump. <sighs> yeah, I'm excited. All right, so let's take the mask off. Uh, remove the mask, and then let's just do a simple pixel map. Let's just stick the stars back in. We're going to leave the use single RGBK expression checked. Uh, we're going to go into the expression editor. We're going to select image 20 plus uh, our luminance stars. Okay, we're going to replace the target image. And then we're just going to drag and drop. Huh. Huh. Gee, you know, you know, just like that. Nice stars. And look, our stars appear to have color but you can't really look at them and go oh my god they look hideous no they they look like stars i mean of course they look like stars but because they are just luminous stars i don't think that really takes anything from the image i think it it actually just says okay there's stars here these are the astronomical uh right ascension and declination coordinates of these stars it does not fake but they're just not overpowering the image with a bunch of crazy colors. All right. Uh, so I do want to show you this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a range selection. And as good as Blur Exterminator is, it is complemented by MLT. So for sharpening. So let's do a real time preview. And we're just going to select. I'm going to really push this down. We're just going to grab. Just a small area. Let's push that fuzziness up and that'll give us a good blend. And then we're gonna smooth it. We're just sharpening the, the brightest parts of the image and we want the darkest parts of the image to be a little softer and that gives us depth. 
least I think so. Uh, so accept that. That creates a mask. Close a real-time preview. Close the tool. Let's take the mask and apply it. Okay. We know that the mask was applied over this super bright area here. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, okay. Where's that? MLT sharpen. I've already made this, uh, this up to save all my settings. So this here, my, this is my layers, layer two, three, and four. These are the numbers. This is very aggressive. I usually take this layer three here, click on it. And I come down here in the bias and I'm going to put that down to maybe just 0.05. Uh, I do not have noise reduction turned on. I only have detail layer turned on and I'm just going to drag and drop. And you can see, whoa, too much. Control Z. Subtle. But it complements it. Pretty good. Let's uh let's get a little more aggressive. Let's get a point zero seven. Control wait, control shift C. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go back out of the image. Okay. And YouTube's going to struggle showing you some of these subtle details, but you can just watch me do it. Mask. Um, remove the mask. And the next thing I want to do is I want to come in here. Let me just grab that area right there. The preview box. And I'm going to run noise exterminator one more time. I'm going to leave it pretty aggressive. I'm going to preserve the details. And I'm really going to smooth this image out. Uh, it's like glass. You can kind of see it. we've got some modeling in here. And it just kind of smooths that out. But the preserving our details really isolates that out. And keeps our details detail-y. Ooh, like butter. Like butter. And one thing, if you wanted to get a little more depth in here, you could... Pull a luminance layer. You could reapply it as a mask. You could minimize your mask. And you could, if you wanted to, open up a local histogram. We're not even going to do a preview. We're going to leave it just like this, but we are going to do a real time preview. And you can see Ugh, it looks terrible. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this amount, push it all the way down to zero. We're going to take the kernel radius. When the kernel radius is low, you're going to get sharper details. So if I move that all the way up, you see, eesh. Move it all the way down. When you push that kernel radius up, you're going to, you're going to get, uh, uh, you're going to use, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You are going to manipulate larger structures. So I like to push it up to maybe 200 and then just inch it forward. Right about there. And then I like to use this, this portion of the preview button. So you can see it's pretty subtle. Preview button again. You can see it's just working on some of these highlights. Just accentuating things. Just a, just a hair. I like it. I don't want to get too crazy with it. I'm just going to drag and drop. Oh, let's take a deep breath, everybody. So there's our image. Yeah, and we did not have to use mask and light green and do all kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, we had to go through and color each one of our images, but guess what? We made each one of these images the color that we want to see. You know, we are all bound by structure, but color is very personal. I think I said that recently. But I'm saying it again. Uh, but I like the way these, these colors produce, and, and obviously they're going to change because... You know, one day this may be a little more yellow. It may be a, a deeper red. But guess what? That's how every one of our images are when we process them. Um, and then also for HOO, I've done uh, a pretty credible image this way on the um, Dolphin Nebula. So I took the HA and I made it red. And then I combined it with the O3 blue in a typical... HOO pixel math formula and amazing image. So it works for that too. So definitely let me know what you think. Try it out. Uh, if you are 
connected to me through Instagram at in arena space, you know, shoot me a, shoot me a message and shoot me an image. Uh, if you are connected to me on messenger or Facebook, send me a message, uh, at Steve Miller, Steve Miller on Facebook, find me on Facebook, shoot me a message. Cause I want to see these, you know, these images. And if you uh, post an image like this on either one of those platforms, tag me in it. Let me know if you like it or tell me you hate it. And I'll tell you to, I won't, <laughs> I might. All right. So mask, remove mask. Our image is done. My work here is done. And this was colorized SHO. So until my next crazy ass video, uh, clear skies and clear minds. See ya.